my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So I love sharing things that I've made, I talk about um, fabrics that I've bought and my favourite patterns and just lots of things that I've been getting up to um, sewing wise. So if that's something that you're interested in, please do make sure that you hit that subscribe button because you'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. So today's video is my long overdue May Makes Roundup. So I'm going to be talking about all of the things that I got sewn up in the month of May. Now May was, um, I guess, quite a, it was still quite a busy month actually, if I think about all the things that I got sewn up. And um, there was quite a variety in what I got sewn up in the month of May. Some, some new patterns that I hadn't tried before and I was quite excited about giving them a try. And um, what I'm wearing today is one of the things that I did get sewn up in May. Um, and the blog has actually gone live now, so I can share it. Um, but this was made um, as part of the Felicity Fabrics blog network because I am part of their blogger team. Um, so this fabric was given to me in exchange for a blog. Um, so I'll link that in the description down below so you can go and read the blog that I wrote for them. Um, it's a cotton jersey in this amazing tiger print um, sort of pattern. I absolutely adore it. Um, if you've been following me for a while and subscribed to my channel for a while, you'll know that my class is actually called Tiger Class. Um, and our class teddy that goes home is a tiger. Um, so the children really loved seeing me wear this dress because of the tiger print. The pattern that I chose to go for was the um, Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress. Now, when I first asked for this fabric from Felicity Fabrics, I wanted to sew up the Nassima jumpsuit by Sew Over It. Um, but a couple of blogs ago, I shared my Nassima jumpsuit um, that I'd made up in a navy um, cotton jersey with like brightly coloured spots all over it um, and then there's buttons down the front. I'll pop an image in of the line drawings and what the pattern looks like so you can see what pattern I'm referring to but I had some fitting issues with that and I haven't resolved them yet and this fabric was just too beautiful um, so I opted to sew it into the Westcliff dress instead because I know it's a dress that fits me really well. It's a dress that I feel really comfortable in, um, it's quite straightforward to sew up and it's great for the summer, but it's also great for wearing to school because it, it offers quite a lot of coverage across um, the bust. And then there's different skirt lengths as well. So I'll talk about this pattern first, but then I've got lots of other patterns that I want to share with you. And where possible, I'll pop on all of the things that I've made so you can see what they look like. I'll also insert images and I'll link all of the patterns and where possible the fabrics in the description below. There's just one garment that I can't put on for you because it's currently in the wash and that just shows how many times I've actually worn it. Um, I've tried where possible to iron all of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you, but just before I started filming, our iron decided um, to break. So I've just ordered a new iron. Um, so some of the outfits are still a little bit crumpled. Um, but again, that just shows that I wear them time and time again, and then they go in the wash. So I am wearing the Friday Pattern Company Westcliff dress. It's a beautiful faux wrap dress that's designed for knit fabrics. Um, it comes in sizes extra small to 4X and the, the measurements for an extra small are a 32 to 33 inch bust, 24 to 25 inch waist and 34 to 35 inch hip. And then for a 4X, it's a 53 to 54 inch bust, 46 to 47 inch waist and then a 56 to 57 inch hip. Um, it's a stylish and comfortable knit dress. It's got a faux wrap front. And when you're creating the bodice and you are um, sort of choosing to cross it over, you can either have this side at the front or this side on the front. It's entirely up to you which way you position them. It's got some really cute features, like it's got this, these gathers into two front yoke pieces. And I really like the shaping that that offers. Um, it's got short sleeves. And then it's also got the option for a belt. What I tend to do, I'm going to stand up and show you, is I tend to put um, the belt piece, I tend to break up, not break it up, I tend to sew it as two separate pieces. And then I just insert it in the side seam here where the bodice and the skirt piece meets. And then I tend to just wrap it around and tie it at the front. That's just personal preference. I know if I made a belt, I'd probably end up losing it. It's got two skirt length options, I'll show you in a second, but I'm just going to stand up so you can see this one. Now, I have decided to add the ruffle. I didn't have enough fabric to make it go floor length, so it stops just at my ankle. Um, so it stops just about here. 
So a couple of inches off the floor, which is actually perfect length really for when you're wearing it out and about. Because I think if it was any lower, it would end up touching the floor and I don't want that to happen. Um, let me open the pattern up and I'll show you. This is the short version um, on the model and there you can see it. And I have got one made in a short length, which is a lemon print fabric. And I'll insert a picture so you can see what that looks like. And so that's what it looks like with the short skirt. And then this is what it looks like with the full length skirt. So you've got the skirt panel and then you add this extra tier on the bottom to get the maxi length. In terms of fabric recommendations, it's perfect for knits of all kind, but you need to make sure that it's got at least 25% stretch. And um, if you choose a knit with more body like a ponty, it will have a more structured modern look. And if you sew it in a drapier knit like a rayon jersey, it'll have a more romantic look. So this is a cotton jersey, so it is a bit firmer, but I have sewn it up in a viscose jersey and it's got lovely movement and drape. It's really swishy, which is just lovely. Um, really straightforward sew. So I would say if you've tackled a few knit pro projects, you would definitely be able to sew this up. It also gives you the finished garment measurements within the booklet, which is great. And then you've got the um, pattern piece layout. And the instructions are really detailed too. So you've got lots of images to help you along the way. Really straightforward. Um, the neckline is finished with a neck band that you attach. So let me show you the um, line drawings within the booklet. So this is how you attach the neckline. So you've constructed the bodice uh, with the sleeves and you've got the gathers going into the front yoke. Um, and then you've got a neck band piece. Um, so it's two pieces that are joined and then you just attach it all the way along and making sure that you don't stretch that out. It's really quite straightforward. And then you baste the bodice in place before you attach the skirt. Now there aren't any pockets on this. Um, let me stand up and see. Yeah, there aren't any pockets. You have got a side seam, but I think because of the shape of the skirt, pockets wouldn't really work. I think it would distort the shape of the skirt. I'd be interested to know if anybody's made it and has inserted pockets. Um, but yeah, it's a really comfortable dress to throw on. It definitely feels like secret pyjamas because it's made in a jersey fabric too. Um, and I've really enjoyed sewing up this pattern. I've sewn up, I think I've made four of this dress now and I've definitely got more dresses planned. Um, I really like the short version for a summer's, summer dress. So when the weather's really warm. This one I would wear when the weather's really warm too, but I may get a little bit hot. So this is for when the weather's not scorching. Um, but yeah, it's been perfect for work and also for going out for dinner and just being out and about too. So that is the first garment that I wanted to talk to you about. So I am going to get changed into the next garment. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've got changed into the next um, garment. It's not this t-shirt, this t-shirt's old. It's actually a skirt that I'm wearing. And I'll stand up in a second. Now, this is one of the garments that I was mid-ironing when my iron broke. So it does look a little bit creased. Um, we have got a new iron on the way, so obviously I will iron it before I wear it. But it's in a chambray fabric, which does tend to crease a little bit anyway. This is a pattern that I got as part of the Inner Haystack pack. So this was the pattern that was included, um, I want to say like a year ago. I think it's been quite an old pattern that was included. And it's a pattern by Untitled Thoughts, and it's the Fleur Fleur Pinafore. I think I'm saying it correctly. Um, and you can actually either sew up the pinafore or sew up a skirt and I've sewn up a skirt because I know like with some of these t-shirts and tops that I've got I do need some plainer bottoms that are going to go with things like this I mean I just wanted a, a nice easy skirt to throw on in the summer so that's what I feel like I've got from this so let me show you the line drawings so you can either do this lovely uh, pinafore or you can just do the skirt and it's got patch pockets on the front now I did include the patch pockets and I've done the little triangle that you, you're recommended, but my pockets do stick out a little bit. So I'd um, welcome any suggestions on how to stop that from happening, or maybe it's just a design feature that I just need to accept. And obviously if I put things in my pockets, like face masks and tissues and things, then they are gonna be a bit bulky. Um, and I'll stand up in a second. Once I've shared all the details of the pattern, I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like, but I'll also pop an image in so you can see what it looks like on two. So it comes in sizes 1 to 16, which is a US 0 to 30. Um, in terms of fabric suggestions, it was designed as the ultimate gardening dress, but there are endless possibilities for the pinafore depending on the fabric. So for cool climates and cooler weather, it recommends tropical weight wool, wool suiting, silk noir, and light to medium weight twill or light to medium weight corduroy. Now a corduroy skirt in this, um, a skirt using corduroy for this pattern would look really lovely for the winter. 
uh, warmer climates and warmer weather, light to midweight linen, chambray, cotton poplin, rayon or linen blend, quilter's cotton and double gauze. It says that it's the perfect palette cleanser between really difficult projects or as an introduction into sewing dresses. It's designed to be a super quick sew and it's a great staple to add to your wardrobe. For the sizes, um, for a size one, full bust measurement of 33 inches, natural waist 24 inches and a hip measurement of 34 inches. And then for a size 16, it's a 56 inch full bust, 50 inch natural waist and a 58 inch hip. So if we look at the line drawings, you'll be able to see the style of the pinafore. It's got these lovely, um, well, there's two options for the straps. You've got tie straps or you've got a button um, that you can add um, and you just fasten the straps with buttons. So that's what the front looks like. And it's got this lovely bib with a um, bib pocket and then it's got patch pockets on the front and then the back is quite plain. And then you've got buttons. I don't know if you can see that, but buttons all the way down. And when I stand up and show you my skirt, you'll be able to see the way that the waistband is finished. Um, and then you've got the option just to do a skirt, which again, finishes with buttons um, and you've got the patch pockets on the front. It's a really cute, quite straightforward pattern. Um, if I stand up, you'll be able to see what it looks like. I've just made mine in a blue chambray fabric. Um, so this is what it looks like. These are the pockets. I don't know if you can see what I mean about them sticking out. I don't know if that's just the fabric. Um, I would have ironed all of this area had my iron not broken. Um, and then, yeah, you've just got a button that fastens in the waistband and then you've got buttons down here and you've got a little button placket that you sew. And then it's the same for this side too. Um, yeah, and then there are the pockets. They're perfect actually, just for either resting your hands in or popping um, tissues or lipstick or I think, if they, I think if I popped my phone in, it would weigh it down too much. It stops just at the knee. So if I stand up, you'll be able to see it stops just at the knee and it's gathered into the waistband and it's the same on the back as well so it's a really cute skirt i really love it in the chambray and actually i could see i could see myself making some more in like some of the cotton poplins that i've got um i've also got double gauze fabric that i haven't used i've had it in my stash for about three years um so i could try and make a skirt using the double gauze um i worry because it's quite fitted at the waist and i worry with double gauze that it stretches out so maybe i will just stick to cotton poplin so i'm really pleased that i've got a really simple skirt that's going to go with some of my busier makes in my wardrobe and i think this is going to be a summer staple um, and i'm quite looking forward to trying the pinafore as well actually just with the bib and i would probably do the ties on top and um, just so i can just um adjust sort of where the bib sits so I'm going to get changed into the next make and I'm going to keep this t-shirt on because this t-shirt will go with the next make too. I'll be back in a second. So I'm back with my next make. I don't look any different because I'm still wearing that t-shirt, but I promise I am wearing something different on the bottom. And the next pattern that I sewed up in May is sticking with the same theme as the Fleur Pinafore. It's a pattern that came as part of the Inner Haystack pack a few months ago and I was really excited about giving it a try. Um, I've sewn it in plain fabric, exactly the same fabric that I used for the skirt because I had enough left over. Um, and again, in the same mindset that I needed some trousers or clots to go with some of the busier tops that I've got. So the pattern is the bolt clots. Um, it's in black and white, which is a bit tricky to see. So if I find a better image, I'll insert it for you. But this is by Make With Mandy, who's a relatively new pattern company to me. Um, I just adore the shape of these collots. Um, they've got pleats in the front. I don't know if you're going to be able to see because the line drawings aren't particularly clear. I think that's my um, fault because I've printed it in black and white. This comes in sizes UK 6 to 26, US 2 to 22 and European sizes 30 to 54. Um, they're a really comfortable collot. They've got an elasticated um, waistband at the back, pleats at the front and then there's pockets as well. And the pockets are really interesting construction. I had to read the instructions a few times for the pockets just because it's a little bit different, but it's a really clever construction and I really enjoyed sewing them up. So in terms of measurements, for a UK six, which is a European 34 and a US two, the bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and a hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a UK 26, which is a European 54 and a US 22, it's a 50 inch bust, 44 inch waist and a 53 inch hip. In terms of fabric recommendations, any mid-weight woven fabrics like a cotton, a linen, a chambray, um, and you also need some lightweight fusing um, for the waistband. There's no other fastenings apart from elastic in the back. 
and I'll tell you a funny story at the end of this um, when I've finished showing you the pattern and explaining about it. I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like, but the construction was really lovely. Um, so it's flat fronted here and then you've got these lovely pleats. I have ironed these and then you've got the pockets here and they've got a lovely little slant there. So you've got the pocket, um, I think you call it a pocket facing at the back and then the pocket bag. Um, they're not very deep pockets. That's one thing I would say, like my hand, you can just see is slightly poking out. So that's one thing I would amend next time I make them. I think I would make the pocket ever so slightly deeper. This is where the pocket bag is. Um, they go past my knee. They're quite wide legged so they're not as wide legged as the Bastion Colots, but that makes them really comfortable. Um, they're not super, super swishy. Um, yeah, they stop just beyond my knee. There's my knee and that's where they stop. Um, and then if I show you the back, you've just got the elastic in the back. Really comfortable. I've worn them to work, but I also wore them out with my daughter cycling. Um, my youngest daughter absolutely loves going on bike rides. So I wore this, I did I wear this outfit combination or maybe I had a different t-shirt on. Anyway, we went for a bike ride and um, got some photos as well as part of the Like So Amazing Snip So Snap, I think it was called. Um, it's a competition that Like So Amazing were hosting and it's now finished, but it was really fun. It was about a competition that was about encouraging you to get out and about and take photos either in a different location or just a different um, pose, if you like. Um, so we got some funny photos of me on the bike um, pedalling, but also um, next to the river near where we live too. It was really fun. But the funny story about these collots was I don't think when you construct the waistband at the back, you insert elastic and then you stitch the elastic in place there and then stretch it and stitch it in place on the other side. And I mustn't have caught the elastic enough or with enough strength um, because then it obviously gathers into that waistband. Um, and when we were cycling over um, to the park, the elastic pinged in the back of my um, collops, um, and it just came undone. So it meant they weren't baggy enough to just fall down, but it just meant that they were slightly baggy. So I had to come home after we'd been out. I managed to keep them up. I think I had a hairband in my bag and I just fastened my collops at the back. And then I had to come home, unpick the waistband and then re-stitch the elastic and just make sure that I'd put enough stitches in to hold it in place. That would be my top tip if you are going to construct the bulk lots. Just make sure that you put enough stitches in to hold the elastic in the back because you don't want the same thing to happen as what happened to me. It was quite funny. They were really, really straightforward to sew. Um, really enjoyable too. There's lots and lots of photos to help you along the way, which is great. Um, and yeah, the pocket bag and the pocket lining construction was a really interesting step. I did have to read it a few times. Um, but it was a really enjoyable sew eventually. Um, mm. These are the um, pocket bags and you've got the pocket lining and pocket facings and then you've got the pocket bag too so it's a really interesting construction um, and it took me a couple of goes of reading the instructions just to get my head around it just because it was a brand new way to construct them but they're really interesting and you end up with something that looks like this and then you fold it round and then that's what your pocket ends up looking like. So you get a little bit of the pocket facing poking through and it's sort of on a slant. Um, really interesting construction um, and really quite straightforward actually to sew. Now I changed, I think, how I don't think I followed the instructions for the waistband. I just did my own method for sewing the waistband. Um, but I'm again really pleased, a bit like the floral skirt, I'm really pleased that I've got a staple in my wardrobe that's going to go with all the different tops and t-shirts that I've sewn up. Um, that are in slightly busier prints. Um, so I would highly recommend the bulk collot pattern. It was enjoyable. I think I could definitely see myself sewing up a winter pair. Um, I really love the pair that um, you can see on the front here. It looks like it's in a wool fabric and I would really like to recreate that. Um, I think in a plain fabric, maybe a grey wool or something. Um, but yeah, I can see myself sewing up some more bulk collots. Um, so that was the next thing that I wanted to share. So I'll get changed into, what number are we on now? The third. No, this is the third. I'll get changed into the fourth garment. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I have got changed into my next make. And again, it doesn't look like I've put anything different on because I'm wearing the same t-shirt. But actually by filming this video, I've worked out that this t-shirt goes with my next make, which is great. Um, I was sent some fabric by the lovely Claire who is Sewing Bear 27 over on Instagram. I'll link her down below so you can go and check her out. Um, very kindly she sent me some fabric which was just so lovely. 
um, and as soon as the fabric arrived I knew exactly what I wanted to turn the fabric into and that was one of my favourite patterns by Nina Lee and it's the Portobello trousers. They're a high-waisted wide leg trouser which are quite versatile actually I've discovered in making them. You can make them in a whole range of um, fabrics so they recommend light to medium weight wovens with some drape like a crepe, linen, chambray, rayon, lightweight wool, cotton lawn and a velvet. Now I didn't buy this fabric so I don't actually know what type of fabric it is. I think it might be like a, um, I don't know, it, I don't know what type of fabric it is. Anyway, I'll stand up so you can see what, what the fabric looks like and if you think you know what it is, please let me know. Um, the Portobello trousers come in a UK size 6 to 20. They're a simple, elegant and oh so flattering high-waisted trouser um, and they are really straightforward to sew. You've got the trouser pattern piece and a waistband. There's an invisible zip in the back and then there's a button on the waistband. In terms of sizes, for the UK 6, it's a bust measurement 32 inches, waist measurement 24 inches and then a hip measurement 33 and a half inches. And then for a UK 20, it's a bust measurement 46 inches waist measurement 38 inches and then a hip measurement 47 and a half inches. Um, I really love them. I've made loads of pairs of the Portobello trousers. If I show you the line drawing, you can see there are pleats on the front and then there are darts in the back. Oh, that's the front, sorry. There's pleats in the front and then darts in the back. You've got the invisible zip and then you've got fairly narrow waistband and then they're quite wide legged and they just go, um, sort of they stop um, at your ankle. Um, so I'll stand up so you can see what these look like. Oh, and they've got pockets too. So there are the pockets, um, which I absolutely adore. Really deep pockets as well, actually. So yeah, those are the pleats on the front, and then you've got darts in the back, and then you've got the invisible zip, and then it fastens with a button. Um, and yeah, they're really high-waisted. Um, so yeah, that's my natural waist and that is where they are, which makes them really comfortable for me because there's quite a lot of room. Without being super baggy, there's room here, which really um, is quite comfortable for me. Um, so that's what they look like. They don't stick out a huge amount. Sometimes when you've got dark, um, not dark, sometimes when you've got pleats in the front, if it's quite a thick fabric, um, it can add quite a lot of bulk around this area, but it doesn't. Um, I think they're really, really comfortable. I'll stand on the chair so you can see um, what the leg looks like. They're fairly wide, which makes them really, really comfortable. Um, and then, yeah, lovely deep pockets. Um, I've worn these to work, not recently because it's been too warm. But um, if I stand up and come a bit closer, I don't know if you can tell what type of fabric that is. Um, I don't know what type of fabric it is. So if you know, or if Claire, you're watching, I'd love to know what type of fabric it is. I wouldn't even want to guess. Um, but yeah, I really love these. They're going to be a great staple for my work wardrobe. And the Portobello trousers are just a really simple, straightforward sew. Um, if you've sewn a couple of garments, you'd definitely be able to tackle these. They're not too fiddly. The only bit is making sure that you can insert the invisible zip. But that's honestly not a difficult step. Um, if you make sure that you press the area and you finish the area correctly, you use the correct zipper foot, um, take your time. I usually baste my zip in um, to stop it wiggling around when I'm using the invisible foot. Um, and then the buttonhole, there's only one buttonhole, um, so it's not too many. And then the button that I chose to use was an Ethel and Joan button. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's a really cute purple but, um, Ethel and Joan button. So I'll make sure I link them down below. They do the most beautiful buttons. Um, so that was another make that I got sewn up in the month of May and it's been, um, well it's been a pattern that I've used loads and loads and loads which is great. I love it when there's a pattern that I fall in love with and I can make multiple um, garments but it's also um, a pair of trousers that I've worn to work quite a few times too so I've definitely got a lot of wear out of them. So I'm going to get changed into my next make which is a hack which I'll talk to you about and I've actually done two of this hack. The other one is in the wash at the moment, so I'll put that one on, but I'll put pictures in of the other hack so you can see what that looks like. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, I am back wearing my next make. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I've shared this already, but this is a hack of two patterns. 
So I absolutely love the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress, which is a new pattern that's been released in their expanded size range. And um, so they've got two size bandings in this pattern, a UK 6 to 24, and then a UK 16 to 34. Um, for a UK 6 for the Lyra shirt dress, it's a bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches, and then a hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a 34, it's a 56 inch high bust, 60 inch bust, 53 inch waist and a 61 inch hip. So the Lyra is a shirt dress that's got a two piece collar, so a collar stand and a collar, um, button placket down to the waist. And then you've got two shirt, two skirt length options. So you've got um, the full length, which is like a maxi with a shortish skirt and then a panel on the bottom. And then you've got a shorter skirt length, which finishes just at the knee. Um, which looks like that. Um, you've got two um, sleeve options. If I show you the line drawings, so you've got the longer sleeve, which is gathered into elastic, and then you've got the shorter sleeve, which is described as a t-shirt length, which is the length that I am wearing at the moment. All of my versions have gone with short length sleeves because what I tend to do is roll my sleeves up, so I didn't see the point in using longer. Um, I didn't see the point in adding longer sleeves because I would just end up rolling them up. These are the line drawings. So you've got this option, which has got the shorter skirt with the ruffle on the bottom, or you've got the longer skirt length, which finishes at your knee. Um, this is what the back looks like, and this is what the front looks like. Um, it's got bust darts, and then you've also got the option for a waist, well, they're not waist ties actually, it's a belt, but I, in all of my versions that I've sewn up, I've added ties instead of a belt. Um, I just worry that um, a belt would end up getting lost, um, or it would fall off. Um, so I have just inserted the um, sort of the I've done the belt pieces of two separate pieces. So I've created ties and then I've just inserted them at the side seams. So what I decided to do with this pattern because I've really loved um, sewing it up and I made a dress. I've made quite a, I think I've made nine of the Lyra dresses now. Um, I saw in the shops um, a couple of months ago actually a jumpsuit which was buttoned down on the on the top and then it had quite wide leg culotte style. Um, trousers and then there was a belt as well so I felt quite inspired to have a go at trying to create something myself so I used the top half of the Lyra and then I've used a pattern from Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book which is this book and I've used actually the pattern that Tilly's wearing on the front here which is the Sophia dungarees and you can make them as Sophia trousers so I used the trouser pattern piece from this book I just show you there's the trousers so the trousers have actually got a waistband on. I just didn't include the waistband. I think the waistband actually is made. Yeah, you fold down the fabric to make the waistband. So I just didn't do that. And obviously, and it's got um, elastic in the back too. So I just didn't insert the elastic. Now I said that I'm going to film a video about how I hatched the two patterns together. It was actually really quite straightforward. The key thing that I needed to make sure I did was I needed to measure where the bodice stopped and where the trousers stopped. And just, I needed to make sure that I had enough um, room at the bottom of the bodice and the top of the trousers to combine the two um, to make sure that I wasn't gonna give myself a wedgie when I put it on. I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like. And I won't talk too much more about the Lyra shirt dress because I'm gonna pop a dress on when I finish sharing these garments. Um, I have made two, I've loved this hack so much that I've made two. The second one was in like a khaki, um, viscose fabric that had leopards all over it. This one is a leopard print fabric that came in a So Heli Jane box and I just love. It's got pink and grey. Um, has it got pink? No, it hasn't got pink. I've got pink on the buttons. That's where the pinks come from. It's got grey leopard print spots, dark blue, and then it's this pale blue background and I just really love this colour. And um, I have got buttons all the way up, but I just prefer for comfort to have my shirt slightly open ever so slightly. Um, if I stand up, you can see um, it's got pockets, which I absolutely love. The dress comes with pockets too. And with the Sophia dungarees, you can insert pockets. That's what I've chosen to do. Um, I've got the little ties here and they've just been inserted as waist ties. And because this print is so busy, you can't actually see where the two meet. There is a line across here. The buttons stop there and then there's ever uh, uh, like two inches, I think, before you get to the trouser piece. So I just had to make sure that when I was um, drafting the pattern pieces, the trousers, there was enough for me to join the bodice. Because what I didn't want was the trousers really pulling up here. So I just made sure on the pattern pieces, I held them up against my body for where I wanted them to stop. 
and then I added a couple of centimetres just to ensure that I had enough between the two um, to base them together. And because I didn't want an elastic channel going around here, I basted them together, tried it on to make sure that I was happy with where um, the waist stopped. And I wanted it to stop on my high on my waist here. And then I've got the ties. So I've got the option to just give it a little bit of shaping. And then I've still got enough room in the top and definitely enough room in the bottom for it to be really comfortable. I'll stand up so you can see where the trousers stop. Um, and I've just got my jelly shoes on at the moment. So they are a little bit wide legged. They're not really tight on me, which is great. And then they stop um, just above my ankle. It's going to be a bit tricky to show you. But yeah, it stops just above my ankle. Um, so my ankle's here and it stops about here. So just above. Really, really comfortable. I've worn this quite a few times to work, but I've also worn it out when I've been out with my girls. Um, and it's really, really comfortable. And this is a viscose fabric. And I think it works really well um, as this hack. It's really comfortable. It's been great when the weather's been really warm too. So I have made a second one already and I've definitely got more planned. Um, and I will do a proper tutorial. Um, it's in the pipeline at the moment. I just need to edit it and then I can get that out to you. So if you're interested in making your own Lyra Sophia hack, um, then you can have a go at doing it too. But it was honestly such a simple hack. Um, and I'm really pleased with the outcome. So I will insert images of the other jumpsuits so you can see what that looks like too. And I'm just gonna get changed into my Lyra dress so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so this is my Lyra dress. Um, again, it does button up all the way to the top, but I just prefer to have um, my dresses slightly open. I just feel like that's a bit more comfortable on me. This fabric is absolutely gorgeous. And this is a um, viscose crepe that I got from Semi Sunshine. It's got hearts all over it and it's just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. And then I use these gold buttons. I might have to come a bit closer so you can see. These gorgeous gold buttons that I got from Felicity Fabrics that I've got hearts on. And I just love how much they match the hearts that are all over um, the fabric. Um, so this is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress. I've already talked about the sizing. Let me just go back to the drawing so you can see. Um, so, yeah, this is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress. And I've just made the midi length dress uh, with the collar, the placket. I didn't add a belt. I did add um, ties and I've just sewn those into the side seams. And I'll show you that in a second. And then I went for the midi length skirt. Um, and then I've got the um, T-shirt length sleeves. I love this fabric. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I don't wear a huge amount of red, but I have worn this to work a few times and I've got so many compliments on the pattern of the dress and the style of the dress and the colour. Um, I haven't worn this when I've been in class teaching. I've worn it on one of my leadership days because um, I worry about the children getting paint all over it. I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like, but I'll pop images in of me wearing the dress too. Um, so yeah, I've just got the ties, if I show you, I'll undo the belt so you can see. They're just waist ties that I've inserted into the side seam here, just where the bodice is attached to the skirt. Um, and then I just wrap it around the back and then bring it to the front and it just brings in that skirt and um, top ever so slightly. And then if I stand up so you can see, I've got that lovely ruffle on the bottom. Um, I have got pockets in this version which I love um, and yeah it's just really comfortable it's really swishy in this viscose crepe I love it and I just love that gold from the buttons too really comfortable um, and a really enjoyable sew actually for the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra um, I've really enjoyed making them and like I said I've made quite a few of them now um, it is so let me see what they just oh I haven't said fabric recommendations so in terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend light to medium weight woven fabrics like a cotton lawn, a voile, a seersucker, chambray, double gauze, viscose, tensile, or lighter weight needle cord. And I've made it in a cotton poplin as well. And I would say a cotton poplin works really nicely for it too. This ultra cool shirt dress has an oversized blousy bodice with bust darts, um, button front opening, two piece collar and stand, and of course, side seam pockets. There's a gathered skirt that can be hemmed just above the knee or add to the midi panel for a trendy tiered look. Um, and then the short sleeves for easy breezy summer or full length billowy sleeves with elasticated cuffs. And you can just about see that there on the model. So I've always gone for the shorter sleeve because I know that I'll tend to wear these in the summer. 
um, and like I said with long sleeves I just tend to push them up anyway so even if I was wearing it for winter I would end up pushing them up I can just pop it on with a cardigan and when the weather was a little bit chilly just a few weeks ago I just popped on a cardigan um, and wore it with tights and it worked perfectly so I can see these dresses working not just for the summer but for when the weather gets a little bit cooler too um, so I'm really pleased I absolutely love this dress it makes me smile every time I put it on um, I'm going to get changed into the final dress that I made and I've already shared this on one of my vlogs because this was the dress that I made for my birthday so I'll pop that on I'll be back in a second okay this is my next make um, it is the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta dress which I made for my birthday um, I love making a new dress or a new outfit to wear when it's my birthday um, and this is what I chose to wear this fabric is from Fabric Godmother. Um, I absolutely love the lot of dress because it's really comfortable, but it still feels really lovely and stylish. I really love the length of the skirt. I went for the midi version for this um, and I've got the pattern here to talk to you about. And then I'll put images of me wearing it, but I'll also stand up so you can see. As you can tell, it's not been ironed properly. And again, that's because my iron decided to um, stop working. So apologies for the creases, um, but I'll put images in of me wearing it where it's not creased. Um, so this is the pattern, it's the Tilly and the Buttons Lotta pattern. Um, the great thing about this is you can either use it to make woven or you can use it to make um, stretch dress. So you can use both woven and um, jersey fabrics for this pattern, which is just amazing. Um, it's described as a pattern for beginners and I would definitely say it's quite straightforward to sew up. The only fiddly bit, I guess, is inserting the facing and stopping it from flipping. But if you do the understitching, um, then that stops that from happening. And then you've also got, I don't know if you can see, but there's elastic across the middle. Um, you can see better on the model. And that's really straightforward to do, but it is a bit fiddly. So if you haven't done that before, um, it, I mean, the instructions are amazing. They really hold your hand throughout. So it's not difficult, but it's just a bit fiddly. It comes in sizes UK 6 to UK 24. For UK 6, it's bust measurement 30 inches, waist measurement 24 inches, and a hip measurement 33 inches. And then for a UK 24, it's a 48 inch bust, 42 inch waist, and a 51 inch hip. They recommend light to medium weight drapey fabrics like a chambray, a viscose, tensile, double gauze, brushed cotton, or crepe. The short sleeve version can be made in a less drapey fabric like a linen, cotton lawn, and seersucker. And then if you are more experienced, it says try single knit drapey jersey, stretch velvet or lightweight French terry. And then these are the line drawings. So it's got a grown on sleeve and then you can add a bracelet sleeve if you want to. For all of my versions that I've made quite a few lot of dresses, I haven't ever added the bracelet length. But I've seen some beautiful versions where people have added that uh, length. And then you've got the option for it to stop at your knee or you can do midi length. And then there's an option to add patch pockets on the front. I haven't added patch pockets on any of my versions. You can see, I don't know if you can see properly on there, but there's patch pockets on that version. I don't know if the instructions inside have got better images of um, the pockets. Um, but yeah, I've never chosen to add patch pockets on the front because um, I don't feel like it needs it and I worry about them sticking out a little bit. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoyable sew. Um, really straightforward to sew up to. Um, and just looks great in a range of fabrics. So I'll stand up so you can see what this one looks like. Um, I've got the grown on sleeve. This fabric is amazing. I absolutely love the colours in this fabric and it's from Fabric Godmother. I think they've still got some left. So if they have, I'll link it in the description below for you. And then it's got the facing on the inside, um, which is nicely stitched in so it doesn't flip out. And then you've got the elastic channel across the middle and that's created when you attach, when you, um, attach the skirt and the bodice. Um, you create elastic channel and it goes all the way around. This is a midi length skirt and it's really swishy because this is a viscose crepe. If I stand up, you can see the skirt is slightly creased. You can see that. Um, this stops at my, uh, just below my knee. I'm not going to be able to show you properly. Um, but yeah, I just love that length of skirt. It's slight, um, I think I had to go slightly shorter than midi because I didn't have enough fabric. Um, and then one thing that I had to do differently for this is the front skirt and the back skirt are cut as two separate pieces. But for the back piece, because I didn't have enough fabric to cut the skirt on the fold, I've actually had to cut it as two pieces. I don't know if you can actually see. There's a seam line that runs down the back piece just here. But because this print is so busy, you can't see that. And that was just to make sure that I could get the dress out of this fabric. Um, and I think that's fine because the skirt's slightly gathered from that elastic. You can't really see the seam line. Um, so yeah, 
really pleased. I loved wearing this to school. My husband bought me a lovely little fox necklace. I think I've got it up here actually. My husband bought me a fox necklace for my birthday and it just went perfectly with the dress. I love, love how cute that is. That's by um, Laura Danby and she's over on Instagram. I'll link her down below if you're interested, but she's got loads of lovely jewellery and she makes other things too. Um, but it just went perfectly with this dress. Um, and it was really lovely to be able to wear the necklace and the dress together. And I did wear it to work and I was in class teaching on my birthday. Um, which was really lovely because children just make such a fuss of anyone that's got a birthday. Um, and I came away without any paint or anything on my dress, which is just amazing after a full day of teaching four and five year olds. Um, yeah, and this is a dress that I will wear not just on my birthday, but lots and lots. I think it's going to be great for the summer. Um, because the bodice is quite loose, um, it's quite breathable as well, which is great when the weather's quite warm. Um, I've got one more thing to share that I made and then I've got a pattern to talk to you about and I'll put a picture in um, because Lola made a dress in May. Well, we made it together. She mainly did it and I'll talk about it when I share the pattern. Um, I find it really hard to just sit on my hands and not get involved too much. Um, but she was really thrilled with herself with her finished dress. So I'll pop on the last thing that I've made and then I'll share Lola's dress at the end. So this is the next thing that I got sewn up in uh, May. I nearly said March, in May. Um, and you can see it's not been ironed, so apologies for that, but uh, the iron broke. Um, and this is another favourite pattern of mine and it's the Leo Dungarees by By Han London. And this comes in sizes UK 6 to 34 and the US 2 to 30. And then I've got the measurements here. Um, for a US 2, which is a UK 6, a high bust measurement 30 inches, bust measurement 32 inches, waist measurement 25 inches, and then hip measurement 35 inches. And then for a US 30, which is a UK 34, it's a 64 inch high bust, 66 inch bust, 59 inch waist, and a 69 inch hip. In terms of fabric recommendations, they recommend natural fibres and floaty drapey fabrics. Um, so things like a viscose chalice, viscose twill, viscose cotton linen blends, soft enzyme washed linen, double gauze, chambray and flannel. Um, it does take up quite a lot of fabric between 2.6 metres and 3.5 metres. I think I had three metres of this fabric and I just managed to squeeze my pair of Leos out of them. And I made a size, um, I think I did a six, a US six UK 10. Um, they're super, super comfortable. Um, they've got deep crotch, loose legs that are elasticated at the ankles, gently pleated at the waist. There's a bib front and a bib back with adjustable shoulder ties. Um, really quite straightforward to sew up, really comfortable to wear, quite easy to throw on as well and feel really breezy and just really comfortable to wear. And um, here are the line drawings and you'll be able to see how billowy they are. They've got this lovely scooped detail at the hip that goes all the way around to the back, which is beautiful. And that bit is finished with bias binding, which is actually a really enjoyable, quite relaxing process when you're making the Leo dunkarees. You can see they're gathered into elastic at the bottom and then you've got the ties at the top. Really quite straightforward to sew up. Um, here are a couple of images from Byham London and then I'll stand up and show you the pair that I'm wearing. Um, and if I can, I'll pop images as well. I haven't actually got images of me wearing these yet. Um, because I made them and then the weather got a bit too chilly to wear them and then the weather got too hot to wear them so I haven't actually been able to wear them yet. Um, the fabric is a um, viscose linen that I got from Rainbow Fabrics and I got another colourway which is a rust colourway but I only got two metres of the rust and I haven't got enough to make these because th this um, version was just under three metres so I'm going to have to rethink what I'm going to turn the other um, viscose linen into. It's like a rust colour, it's really beautiful, but I'm not quite sure what I'm going to turn it into. I'm considering using the bib front and the bib back and then just adding like gathered skirt, but I think I'd have to extend the bib, otherwise I'd end up with the skirt up here and that would just look a bit silly. So if I was going to do that, I think I would extend the bib to where I want the skirt to sit um, and then possibly add some ties so that I can bring it in ever so slightly. But I'm going to play around with that. It's, it's an idea that I've had. I've seen that they've got an add-on pack to make um, the Leos as a dress. So I may look into that instead so that the pattern pieces are there for me. Um, but I'll stand up so you can see. I've got the ties there on the shoulder. And then I've got the bib front. And then there, there's um, pleats on the front. You can just about see them. And then the same on the back. And they are really, really wide and really billowy. And then it's just gathered into elastic at the bottom. 
uh, which is really cute. They're so swishy and roomy. It's really, really lovely. It makes them really comfortable. But yeah, I haven't worn them out yet um, because um, it got too cold and then it got a bit too hot. But that's what they look like. Uh, and like I said, apologies for the creases. Um, so those are all the things that I got sewn up for myself in May. And then, like I said, Lola did some sewing in May. We did some sewing together and we used the pack that we got. I'm just going to grab the pattern. So we used the pack that we got, like a, a box, a sewing box that came. And it was from a company called Sew Ab Fab. I'll link them down below because they do um, sewing boxes for adults, but they also do them for, I think they call them tweens. Um, so we sewed up this pattern, which is the Alice dress, and it's by a company called Bobbins and Buttons. And this is from age 12 months to 13 year olds. And that's why we got it, because Lola's 10. So we thought she could get wear out of this dress, um, you know, as she grows. Obviously, when she gets to 13, we won't be able to. Um, but it was a really enjoyable sew. It's a really beautiful dress, if I show you. It's got these gorgeous ruffles down the front. The pocket detail is really interesting. It's like a scoop pocket. And then the, your hands almost go in here. So it's like the front of the dress. Um, I can't remember where the, the sleeve stops. I think it might be just past the elbow. Um, in terms of sizes, for 12 months, it's 31.4 inch in height, 19.6 um, inch chest, 18.5 inch waist, 19.6 inch hips and then they've got the back of the neck to the waist measurement which is 8.1 inches and then for a 13 year old um, it's a height of 62.2 inches um, 31.8 inch chest 25.9 inch waist 33.8 inch hip and then the back of the neck to the waist measurement is 14.7 inches now Lola will be 11 next weekend actually it's nearly her birthday we went off her height her height puts her at an 11 year old and that's the size that we traced off um, and she is I think she's about 142 centimeters which is just above the 10 year old size and it fits her really nicely I'll put in an image of what she looks like in her dress it's got an invisible zip down the back I don't know if you can see that on the line drawings um, it might not be very clear to see it's not coming up very clear um, but yeah it's got an invisible zip down the back and then the ruffle starts at the front and it goes round to the back um, really quite straightforward, quite a loose fitting dress as well. Um, and Lola had so much fun sewing that up. Um, in terms of suitable fabrics, they recommend a cotton poplin, a broadcloth, chambray, double gauze, cotton voile and other medium weight fabrics. So it was a chambray fabric that we sewed it up in. Um, and within the box, you got the fabric, the pattern, you got a lovely little um, notes, you got a tea bag. I think we got the cotton thread and we also got did we get the zip yeah you got the zipping you got everything basically I think included let me have a look and then you got some lovely little notes as well so it just says welcome to sew ab fab dressmaking kit for tweens the Alice dress by bobbin and buttons is such a great pattern with clear instructions to follow there are not many extra tips we can give you but there was a few things that um they gave us to think about the construction um and then there's some care instructions and then just have fun, basically, uh, making your garment. And then, yeah, we've shared it over on Instagram already. We went to Kew Gardens and I wore some Me Made and Lola wore some Me Made. Um, and she's loved wearing the dress. And it was so lovely to see the joy on her face at wearing something that she'd made. So I think we'll definitely get more use out of this um, pattern. Um, I might make one for Ruby as well. Um, now she's 12, she'll be 13 in September and she's quite tall for her age. So I'm hoping that I would be able to use the pattern to make her one. Uh, we've definitely got some more years to get out of this pattern for Lola because she's only just going to be turning 11 in a week's time. So that was everything that we got sewn up in May. Lots of things for me, but lots of patterns that I've had in my stash for ages that I have finally got around to using and some basics which are going to go with lots of things that I've already got in my wardrobe and then it was really lovely to sew a pattern up with Lola too um, she's really enjoying sewing with me um, I think I've mentioned this before but Ruby is doing textiles at secondary school and she's really enjoying sewing at school and then coming home and doing a little bit on her own too so I'm really hoping to encourage them to keep going with that sewing so that they learn those skills now so that they've got them for the rest of their lives 
Um, I really hope you enjoyed hearing what we got up to in the month of May. I will be back soon, in fact very soon, with my June makes because June has nearly come to an end. Um, thanks as always for commenting on my videos and like if you are enjoying my videos please do hit that subscribe button. Um, thank you so much for watching, I'll be back soon with another video. Take care, bye!